Well, good morning, friends. Thank you very much for joining us on another TNT, a look behind some of the main news stories here in Thailand, as well as the region. And regionally, we've got some Filipino inmates putting their dancing shoes back on. The 1MDB scandal, a huge 7.8 billion US dollar scandal that uh, enveloped Malaysian politics. We've got the latest news on that. Uh, also, uh, what do we got here? Oh, Thailand's GDP. Some good news in that regard. Uh, also, Anaton, the public health minister here in Thailand, taking a very big, deep breath indeed, inhaling big time, imagining that Malaysia might be following in the footsteps of Thailand. And we've also got uh, the latest in the Mountain Bee fire. That fire some 10 days ago. The latest news, uh, not so much in the number of people that have died, which has now registered some 19 people, but uh, some of the investigation into that fire. That's all coming up in today's TNT. But we are starting with the uh, big news of the day. What could be bigger than this? We've got a story from The Nation, uh, The Nation Thailand. Half-naked joggers in Pattaya spark ire on social media. Now, a photo of two foreigners jogging down Pattaya's main road, Circumvent Road, in nothing more than tight speedos. It's sparked a furor on social media, with many asking if it's even legal. And look at them there. Look at them. These two, what, 50, 60-year-olds with their jogging shoes and nothing more than their speedos. And some people even suggesting that it could be public indecency. I mean, this is a travesty. Fancy this happening. We go further into this story. Oh, there's another photo of them. Good heavens. And it's so indecent, they had to block out a picture of their bottoms, covered up in speedos, by the way, uh, but there it is. The nation has taken it upon itself to <laughs> block out the gentleman's bottoms. Now, the fact that these two 50 or 60-year-old gentlemen are out on the roads exercising, I think should be, well, generally applauded. Uh, the fact that they should be wearing Speedos or something else, uh, I'm not so sure that uh, the, the problem is covering anything in particular given that a lot of 50, 60-year-olds, there'd be other things wobbling around, like the sort of the man boobs and the tummy and all sorts of other things. So I'm, I'm really wondering exactly what's happening in Thai media when they think that this photo could be construed as anything even slightly indecent. Now, there are other places in Pattaya where you could see uh, young ladies rubbing themselves up against poles. You could see people wearing very, very short shorts. Uh, you could see all sorts of other acts of uh, alleged indecency. I would suggest that this is not indecent and that the nation Thailand really have gone a bit too far with their coverage of that particular story. Now the nation digging a further hole for itself, even uh, quoting the penal code here, Article 388, and saying that anybody doing any shameful act in public by indecently exposing oneself could be charged to a maximum fine of 5,000 baht. I think these two gentlemen could probably afford the uh, 5,000 baht. But the article, because there's really nothing to this whatsoever, they dragged out three paragraphs, but they had to add a paragraph on the bottom just to make their word count. Jomtium Beach in Chombri Province overlooks the Gulf of Thailand and is about 165 uh, kilometres southeast of Bangkok, just in case you were wondering where Pattaya is. So a bit of fluff there from the nation Thailand. You're on TNT and let's go to the front page of the Bangkok Post today and the headline tensions thwart growth. Uh, just imagine they used the word thwart where they could have used 18 other words that uh, Thai people might even be able to pronounce. But there it is. Tensions thwart growth. Of course, the background of that story saying that... Um, all the geopolitical problems in China and Russia, uh, the European economy, the fact that the US is already in recession, the UK is in recession, uh, a whole lot of economic 
uh, turbulence ahead, but somehow Thailand's been able to eke out projections for not only last year's uh, improvement in the GDP, but they're also projecting more of the same this year. Uh, According to the Bangkok Post article, according to the Office of the National Economic and Social Development Council, Thailand's economy in 2022 is projected to expand in the range of 2.7 to 3.2 percent. Now, earlier they had a range of 2.5 to 3.5 percent growth. Uh, Obviously, they're able to sort of wean that down and get it more clarified as the year goes by. But as I've said, uh, Asia generally is going to come out of this whole COVID pandemic mess. I think in better shape than a lot of the Western economies. We've already noted that some of these major economies are already in recession. Now, I don't really know if there's any country in Asia, just thinking off the top of my head, that is looking at negative figures for the GDP for 2022. Uh, And you can't really hide these numbers. I mean, uh, the people are going to get their calculators out and work out in uh, no time at all whether countries are fudging their GDP. Uh, I think China is probably in a situation where it's going to be heading into recession. Maybe not this year, but certainly in the next few years. But uh, good news there for Thailand that it's able to eke out some growth of their projecting between 2.7 and 3.2%. Just going down a bit further in that story, the Bangkok Post story, and talking about the export value of goods in US dollars anticipated to increase by 7.9% compared to 19.2% expansion last year and upwardly revised from 7.3% in previous estimates. This is all good news for the Thai economy. Uh, From a food point of view, for example, Thailand is completely independent and it's exporting at the moment more than it's importing. So in a recovery sense, this is uh, good news for the Thai economy. Let's go to our next story now. And uh, I suppose it's just part of that last story. Uh, where the Bangkok Post has a headline, Instant Noodle Brands Seek Price Hike. Now, there's a few things like rice and noodles, which are the bellwether for the Thai economy. And it looks like the producers of instant noodles, one of the staples of the Thai diet, are seeking price hikes on some of their goods. Uh, This story saying that uh, some of the main brands, Mama, YY, Yum Yum, Nissin and Susat, Uh, asking after half a century for the Commerce Ministry to allow them to raise their prices. And they're looking at raising them from six baht a packet to eight baht a packet. That's some 25% increase. So inflation, although it has been subsidised by the Thai government for a few months now, certainly fuel prices, which really saves the costs going up on a lot of other goods that are transported through the transport industry using things like fuel. Uh, if, if this is going up 25%, I think that is a, a bit of a red flag that's being waved about the Thai economy. So those main noodle producing companies asking for a 25% increase on their noodles. To the latest on the Mountain Bee Fire, the fire that occurred on August the 5th in Satahip, the headline in Thai PBS saying that the Mountain Bee Fire families want the Crime Suppression Division to take over the investigation. Now, in the early part of the investigation, a 27-year-old came forward who was charged with uh, the fire. He said he was the owner. So the Thai PBS story saying that 13 representatives of the injured and dead from the fire uh, have lodged a complaint with the CSD uh, in an effort to get them to take over the investigation from the local police. So just check out this paragraph here. They say the group wants the CSD to investigate any local officials or influential people who might have a vested interest in the pub and whether the man who claims to be the pub's owner is in fact the real owner. So uh, a lot of speculation yesterday that in fact the owner of the property is the father of the man who brought himself forward who at 27 years old, a lot of people are thinking, gee, he's pretty young to be owning a huge establishment like that. Uh, the Tiger yesterday had the headline court issues arrest warrant for CRB's father, the real owner of Mountain Bee. 
And that story says that the Pattaya Provincial Court issued an arrest warrant for the 27-year-old's father, who was suspected of being the real owner of the Mountain Bee nightclub, which caught fire on August the 5th. He's a 55-year-old, his name is Somyot, wanted on suspicion of two counts of carelessness, causing death and opening an entertainment venue without a licence. So there's plenty more coming your way on that particular story. And uh, it looks like the CSD will be called in to find out exactly what's going on. We are aware that uh, there have been quite a few officials that have already been sidelined to their desk jobs or sent up to head office in uh, Bangkok during the investigation. So it looks like there could be some more issues about the ownership and uh, who is exactly involved with the Mountain Bee pub that will come to light over the next few weeks. And moving on from the Mountain Bee fire, you might remember the dancing inmates. Here we are, Cebu's famed dancing inmates are back with their first public performance in two years. Uh, You may recall that it was, uh, yeah, a good couple of years ago when these inmates in their orange jumpsuits were doing the dance from Michael Jackson's Thriller. Well, they're back again. And uh, it looks like the 150 inmates participated in a performance last Friday as officials relaunched the jail's famed dancing program, opening their five-song medley with a theme song from Mission Impossible. Uh, If you just want to enjoy a little bit, here they are a few years ago doing uh, some of their dancing. I think this one was to They Don't Care About Us, another Michael Jackson song. Uh, As you can see, they're not the world's best dancers but then again it's uh, probably better than breaking big rocks into little rocks or doing knitting or something else so we look forward to them performing the theme from Mission Impossible. Now I'm just thinking about that most pop music of course is in 4-4 four, four time 1-2-3-4 two, 1-2-3-4 four, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, which is very danceable the Mission Impossible theme is in a very odd time signature. It's in the 5-4 time signature. Yeah, 5-4. That's going to be really hard to dance to. So it's going to be interesting to see whether they are, in fact, dancing or doing sort of more choreographed uh, action moves. But uh, good to see the Filipino dancers in their orange jumpsuits back in action. To another regional story, much more serious, and this uh, from the Straits Times in Singapore, the deposed Myanmar leader Aung San Suu Kyi gets six more years of jail, and a story originally from Bloomberg talking about Myanmar's deposed leader Aung San Suu Kyi sentenced to six more years. She's now 77 years old, of course, she was the uh, well, the titular leader of Myanmar when uh, the government, the NLD, was leading. They were elected, but they were deposed in a coup last year on February the first. Now there's uh, an, another round of verdicts on the show trials, basically, and Aung San Suu Kyi now being committed to a 17-year jail term. And as the article says, extinguishing any chance of her staging a political comeback while the junta remains in power. And it seems to me that the junta are going to be in power for uh, a good long time. Myanmar, the whole economy, the whole place basically in the toilet at the moment. The problem, of course, is for Thailand being a close neighbour, sharing some 2,500 kilometres of border with Myanmar. We know that there are many Burmese trying to get across the border into Thailand because they know, well, it's much more peaceful and they've got a likelihood of getting a job here. But the plight of 77-year-old Aung San Suu Kyi and the Burmese people looking pretty bleak at the moment. Let's move on to another regional story and also from the Straits Times. Najib's son talks up GE candidate ahead of XPM's Final appeal against jail term. Just some very quick background to this story. Najib Razak was Prime Minister of Malaysia and he's been charged with uh, corruption over the 1MDB scandal. Money put into a huge fund for basically infrastructure but was frittered away 
some 7.8 billion US dollars. And Najib Razak is staring a 12 year sentence in the face at the moment. And his son looking like he may become a new prime ministerial candidate as uh, things unfold in the upcoming Malaysian election. And the story from Ramanan there, uh, from the Straits Times, saying that Najib is facing a final appeal that's going to be held uh, this month, and that his son, 44 years old, is being touted as a candidate for the Pekan government seat if his father, who's held the seat for more than four decades, is ineligible to contest, according to the Malay Daily, the Utusan Malaysia. Now, fancy uh, having a situation where a government official's son could become the next leader of the country. Oh, hang on, that happened in Singapore, didn't it? The current Prime Minister of Singapore is the son of the former Prime Minister, Lee Kuan Yew, who was Prime Minister of Singapore for some 31 years. What do we have in Thailand? Oh, we had um, Yingluck Shinawat, the sister of Taksin Shinawat, and Patong Tan Shinawat, who is the youngest uh, daughter of Taksin Shinawat, a former Prime Minister of Thailand, who looks like she will be standing as a Prime Ministerial candidate for the Per Thai Party. So maybe there are some politicians who get to hold their positions of power through strong family links. <laughs> who would have thought? This is TNT. My name's Tim Newton. Thank you very much for watching the channel. We do this five days a week and then on Saturdays, in fact, this coming Saturday, we'll be doing a live discussion with you and that'll be at 9 a.m. on Saturday morning, Thai time. In the meantime, though, a final story and we can't leave this one out. A Malaysia eyes tea weed policy. This is from the Bangkok Post again and Anaton having a big sniff there. And uh, the public health minister says he's looking forward to a visit from his Malaysian counterpart, who he says has expressed an interest in studying the Thai model for legalising cannabis for medical use. Hmm. Now, we've got to remember that Malaysia has, well, in fact, it says in this article, has much harsher narcotics laws than Thailand. He says, I believe that would reflect well on our success in bringing the plant into our medical system. Sounds like he's looking for a little bit of regional support for something that he's completely stuffed up. That's not uh, the decriminalisation that bothers me. What people do to their own bodies in their own time, as long as it doesn't harm anybody else, certainly doesn't bother me. But the way it's been introduced, without any checks and balances, without any laws and guidelines, has been a complete botch up. So he's certainly looking for some regional support. But I do notice a little bit later in this article, Anderton also emphasises once again bit of backtracking going on here, that the ministry does not approve of recreational use and has launched further regulations banning wrongful public cannabis from being taken in public places. So there he is in the news once again. Let's just see that photo of him in the Bangkok Post. There he's having a big sniff. There you go. Nice big deep inhale, Cornaniton. That's all we have today for today's TNT. Thank you so much for being part of the channel. I'm deeply grateful and very happy that you can pop in each day and sit down as we have a check behind the main news stories. But from me, on a fairly wet Tuesday morning in Phuket, hope you're well and we look forward to seeing you again tomorrow.